So hello everyone, my name is Shira Cohen, I'm the host of this podcast which used to be called Yoga Therapy and now it's called Reclaiming Our Wellbeing. So I'm the author of a book with the same title, yay, finally did it. I'm a yoga therapist, yoga teacher, Ayurvedic wellness educator, emotional coach and mindfulness teacher. I'm here to share stories, my own but also those of others because listening to another story can change ours. So enjoy. So hello everyone, it's me again. It's been a long time and I've been resisting doing podcasts. I've just been so tired the last few weeks, months maybe. Um, So yeah, and I'm trying to put it off and at the same time I'm thinking of like, what do I wanna talk about? It feels like I've kind of um, gone into a hibernation since the book is out. I was already really tired before the book. But I spoke to a really good friend uh, two days ago, so Diana Tokaji. She's been on the podcast. She was one of the first guests. So Dee, Diana is a wonderful writer. She's the author of Six Women in a Cell and... Surviving Assault, I believe. Uh, She's an amazing writer. So I take I take her advice very seriously. (laughs) I take it to heart. Let's put it that way. And she's also written a beautiful one of my favorite endorsements for my book. And I was talking about why I'm not doing the podcast as much as before and how I feel. Yeah, it's it's kind of. um. A new phase but at the same time I feel like I'm in this chrysalis you know the, the phase before you've actually taken a new form a new shape a new direction uh, a new consciousness so everything's just like this goo it's all just the unknown amorphous space I'm in and I have no idea to go forward and so Dee's suggestion was really great she's very wise she's very wonderful and very warm and she said just use your book use your book to gift back to yourself so open the book like you do the I Ching or something like that because there's so much in there and any passage you read will fill you up so let it feed yourself and I thought that was really beautiful because it is true when I do open it up so I haven't looked at it for a while now but it it does feel really like ah so nourishing and you just dive into it it's like a river so I thought about what what have I been seeing lately and there's a lot of um, resistance as well with the clients that I'm working with and my students and myself and my child and everything else i see there's a lot of resistance and um it's often at this point when we're about to break through when we feel like we're breaking down but actually it's at the point of breakthrough and if we don't move forward we just keep procrastinating repeating going around in circles but when we do move forward we don't know what we're going to move into and that's the scary bit so i just wanted to read a part of the book that talks about um, these breakthroughs so this is still in the the introduction of the book looking at disease present in each of our different layers so the koshas for those who are in yoga therapy ease becomes optional by moving through unease and into the often unfamiliar unfamiliar experience of ease so usually when when we've been so accustomed to our unease if it's a lifelong chronic habit uh, thought pattern uh, physiological um, what do you call that uh, constitution almost it becomes like a constitution or we think we're that way because it's been repeated for so long, then ease actually feels uncomfortable, strange, new. So I see this a lot with um, the clients. There's this huge resistance when I give exercises that are actually gonna deal with what they need to move through rather than what they want. They want more relaxation, they want to feel good. I do that with them, that's what they want. But what I know they need is to, 
to work with the trauma and to reset the whole physiological um, programming, which is often just the cells and the, the physical structure, the posture that has taken a stance against life or against opening up. And when we learn to move into opening up, even just a tiny bit, it can feel very scary. But then the question becomes, how do we, why, why are we scared? What, what thoughts are coming up? What fears do we have associated to it? What can happen? Um, is the level of unsafety so severe that they can't go into this new space? And then it's this threshold that we explore by reclaiming our well-being. Surely we must look at each level and nuance for wholeness to exist. Oversimplification and overlooking something so complete and so complex as emotions is detrimental. For they are the lifeblood of intimacy, health and biopsycho-spiritual breakthroughs. Simply put, Emotions bridge our layers and make us complete. So the next paragraph is about pathologizing emotions. To what extent has pathologizing emotions led to our global crisis, our health crisis? Our, uh, I won't mention the other crises. As a major contributor to psycho neuroendocrino immunological imbalances, Emotional censorship and repression causes physiological stress and chronic sympathetic nervous activation, eventually leading to systemic inflammation, the precursor of all chronic diseases. Emotional suppression can be consciously choosing how we react or respond, where repression is unconscious censorship. Repression ignores our deepest inner self to avoid social rejection and isolation akin to social suicide. So that's how extreme it is. And that's what I see a lot working with people. They are so fearful to work with their emotions. So what, when you open up that posture a little, you start to feel maybe confidence and maybe you even have totally negative associations with confidence and joy, exuberance, expressing yourself in a way that's free, especially now in the culture that we're living in, it's become censored to every degree. So what are the culminative biopsychosocial effects of emotional squelching of grief, anguish, fear, guilt, shame, passion, joy, enthusiasm, courage? And at what cost? Emotionless life sucks the spark out of sociality, connectivity and relativity. We walk a tightrope of emotions, acceptable to others. Emotionally, we starved, constipated and illiterate. Pre-COVID, 240 million of us worldwide were on antidepressants, causing emotional blunting just to override the unbearable intensity of our feelings and our emotions. While many more self-medicate and regulate with substances, activities and seeking counterculture, communities, common unities where feeling and emoting is accepted and even valued is a refuge so a lot of us seek these counterculture um, environments or societies or communities because we we know there's a better way to live but wouldn't it be wonderful if the whole world was like that if the whole world could emote healthily like properly feeling anguish expressing anguish anger grief, shame, guilt, without it becoming so polarizing or weaponizing. It, it's just an emotion <laughs> and it needs it to be emoted, which is a verb. It needs to move. It needs to be expressed. And, and when we work with yoga, for example, just postural yoga, where we letting people open their arms and lift their chest up and rolling the shoulders back. It's quite frightening for people because we've all closed the heart. We've all um, rounded the shoulders to protect ourselves, to protect showing our love, showing our feelings, showing how we really uh, feel in life. And when we do that again and again, it informs our cells and those cells 
have receptors and those receptors when they are fed constantly the same kind of hormones which could be adrenaline and cortisol and uh, dopamine rather than endorphin serotonin and the ones that make us feel good like vasopressin and lactin then um obviously we're more aggressive um afraid vigilant so that's what's happening on a bio psychosocial and even chemical level. So beliefs inform biochemicals, biology informs cells, and cells copy themselves, taking on new impressions as part of the template. Each imprint informs a new reality, an embodied attitude, one kind of certainty passed on. So we can see how physical disease is a long way down the track from our true nature. It's a loud and often last call from our soul, giving us subtle and ever more pronounced prods for years and decades to change, to change the way we are, to change the way we work. So that part is um, from uh, the emotions, I believe, yeah, to emote fully chapter three. And yeah, I just wanna bring this back to working with clients is when when you get them to move between extremes of closing and then opening like a cell or a receptor opening to new impressions opening to new ideas opening to new sensations opening to new hormones opening to new relationships new ways of living um it can be scary but why stop stop just at the point where it gets scary and ask why ask the client why are they scared what could happen and, and what are they protecting themselves from? And what does it feel like to stand taller? And then just keep moving in and out. So that Vini yoga kind of action is really good for that, to, to help them slowly expand and open and find a bolder, braver self. And from that, they can then, and you can then help them to find uh, stronger pathways neurologically and hormonally mentally also verbally and then emotionally so emotions are the charge they are the charge of your um, cells opening up so when you emote when you start to feel that you need to express something all the cells in your body start to shake and that helps the receptors to actually open up so that's why this opening and closing is so important when you do the movement with people Get them to use their whole body, especially if they're very closed down, shut down, just standing and opening up, standing up with the arms wide, like they're yawning and stretching. And maybe they don't want to do that too extreme, but just a little and then closing down and then exaggerate the closing to see, to show them what it, what, what their posture ultimately leads to. And is that what they want? And do they want to stay in that state? And then again, opening. And then you will find they will find that um, they're getting more and more comfortable to open up and they're realizing what they're closing down from or for and how they can actually move beyond it. And if you explain to them that the breakthrough is the scariest point and where most resistance comes from, because we're moving into something new, you motivate them if you don't explain why you're doing what you're doing if you don't know why you are doing what you are doing with them then you have a, a, a higher chance that you're not gonna um, help them cross the bridge into the new state and um yeah so d i want to give you a special shout out for um motivating me and getting me across the bridge and also Jolene who was on the podcast a few months ago I think six months ago or more and um because they've gotten me out of my shell again and Jolene was the one who suggested just do short podcasts five minute ten minutes so that's what I'm going to be doing and if guests want to come on that's fine but I'm not doing this big run after people anymore um I've done that and I'm, I'm trying to move into a new way. I want to do things more organic, more naturally, more calmly. 
I'm not selling my book with this uh, launch kind of crap. I'm sick of it. I just want to go natural and organic on every level. And that includes social, marketing, uh, business. I know it'll happen if, if it has the right message and if people are interested, if it's what people need, it'll, it'll go well. So I'm trusting life and I'm trusting myself. I'm turning within. I'm gaining the, the strength that I need to move forward from the inner sources and from reclaiming our well-being. So Ro, my little baby, my mascot was what Diane was saying. So I think that's a nice way to see it. So I'm sending you all so much love and lots of strength and um, wisdom and courage and just be yourself, dare to be radical, dare to speak out, dare to say what you actually think because when we all speak what we think without being angry but nuanced, deep, thoughtful conversations, nourish yourself on every level. Namaste, have a wonderful week. 